How are you all doing today? Good. Great. Good. So how's the tour been going so far? Um, good, bad, everything in between. It's like good shows, uh, and then there's very rough shows. Right. But it's everything that we expected. And it's our really our first time trying to headline mm -hmm. in 14 years. So it's fine. Right. Rough as in the crowd, or? Yeah. Yeah, because everything else is easy. Mm -hmm. you know, we all get along really well. Good. We're doing all right. Everyone's eating. Everyone's happy. Eating is very important when you're on tour. You could be starving on tour. That happens to a lot of people. Yeah. I guess. That's happened to us. Mm -hmm. In the past. Well, you're on tour for your album Avenger, which yeah. just released. How's the response been so far? So far, the, the write-ups have been great. Um, really, really good uh, reviews. Uh, the people that have heard the record just been raving about it, so we're very happy. It's good. It's awesome. It's good. Um, we're really proud of it. Mm. It took a lot of work to make it. Right, and it took a lot of work because your label kicked you off. Well, um, yeah, our old label basically said they weren't going to put it out, so we ended up recording it in sort of increments, like segments. Like, it took about two years to make it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's kind of good. I mean, I think it, I think it, it, the way that it came about and the way that it manifested is it's, it's really natural. Like the way it, it's really organic. Right. I, and, uh, I like the process. I like it. I like. I kind of like it that way. So you're not you're not really pushing. You put some sort of product out there. Mm -hmm. You're just allowing music to happen. Do you think you would continue with that, or do you want to be back on a label? Well, we're on a label now. Okay. Um, a label called Out of Loss put it out. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of awesome bands. Um, they've, they've worked with a lot of really, really good bands that we really like. So we're really happy about it. You know, it's not a huge label, but you know, it's it's a different time and age. Um, I don't think that that matters as much anymore. Right. You know? Where do you think the music industry is headed? How is <laughs> music changing? I think the music industry is headed to the toilet. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't see music changing that much, and, and other than that, it's, it's obviously going to take its, its normal progression to whatever direction music goes, you know. Um, but the industry is definitely changing a lot. You know, people are getting music for free now, we don't have to wait to get instant gratification as far as music is concerned. So, that obviously changes. I mean, when I was a kid, like, I remember ordering uh, my first Robert Johnson album, and it took three weeks for it to come. I was all excited. It came in the mail. It came bowed. So I had to put it under my bed, and I had to wait another two weeks for it to even straighten out so I could actually play it. And this entire time, I've never even heard him, only read about it. And then finally, the day that I got to listen to him was one of the most magical days of my life. All that anticipation. Great. In a way, I kind of feel sorry for kids for not having that anticipation about music. And, you know, they don't, it's like, it's just instant. It's instant gratification rather than waiting and waiting and waiting, mm -hmm. investigating, and then finally getting that, you know, that, that joy at the very end of the song. Right. What do you think about streaming songs before an album comes out, which maybe even, <clears throat> does it devalue the album even more, or just add to the excitement? Mm -hmm. I don't think anything will devalue art because it, once it's finished, it exists in the world. There's nothing you can do about keeping kids from streaming records. If they're going to take it, they're going to take it, in you know, one way or another. I mean, they used to, I used to dub records um, from friends on cassettes, you know, when I was a kid. So mm -hmm. it's not like I didn't do it in the past. But it is taking some money out of some artist's you know, pockets. It's, it's harder and harder to make a living as a musician. Right. And that's the sad part about it. But you know, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to go with it. Mm -hmm. Try to. I don't know, what do you think? I think that uh, we just need to find more creative ways to put music out there. Um, people are making limited edition vinyl, hand numbered, you know, stuff that they're making from scratch themselves and. People want that because they want something that's special. So, and there are a lot of collectors out there. So I think we're seeing a huge resurgence 
some vinyl because of that. And um, just for that whole retro thing too, I think kids are fascinated by records, you know, because it's not something that they were used to having. But um, yeah, I just think that you just need to be more creative in, in putting out specialty items. And they are worth more money. And then you sell it, and then they'll go sell it on eBay and make twice as money as you did <laughs> in the first place. So that's what's happening. That's true. And some other kid's going to be really happy because he thinks he got something extra special. Yeah. It costs so much. Yeah. <laughs> That's economy, right? Sucker for yeah. an <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, you also have another album called Waning Divine. Can you tell me more about that? Well, that's not a, well, it's vinyl. Um, it's a seven inch split with the Melvins, mm. our favorite bands of all time. And uh, you know, we were lucky enough to put out a split with, with our favorite band of all time. The Melvins uh, on their side is a, a, a suicide of progress, suicide of progress. live, and Waiting Divine is actually the last song on Avenger, so it's not uh, something that's exclusive. Uh, it already appears on the album that we're putting out. But this is on vinyl, split with the Melvins on both of them. That's going to come out in January. But we actually have it for sale on this tour. Mm. The cool thing is Toshi, the same guy who produced our record and recorded our record, also did the Melvin's record on the side. Mm. So it's, it's all one single thing. It's really cool. It's like a big family. Right. That's cool that you can be really close to your biggest influence. Yeah, definitely. We love uh, those guys. Right. Okay. And, and also Dale, uh, Dale does some singing on the record, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're all really close. That's awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else y'all would like to say? Um, buy our record, support live music, go to shows. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Don't eat mushrooms and drive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat yellow snow. We don't have snow down here. That's true. <laughs> Don't eat yellow uh, mist. Um, <laughs> Great. I think that's sage advice to go out. <laughs> so, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.